Hey everyone, today we're looking at the RC circuit. So that is a re resistor combined with a capacitor in a circuit and we're going to start with charge capacitors being the source of potential. What they're going to do is create currents in the circuit, but unlike a battery, a capacitor is not going to be able to maintain that potential difference. It's going to discharge and neutralize itself so the currents are going to become weaker and weaker as time goes on. And capacitors are discharging, the vol voltage decreases, so the current will decrease over time, and we can use Kirchhoff's rule to determine the amount of charge and the amount of current passing through that circuit as time goes on. So we've already seen this in the what is happening in wires video where I had a charge capacitor and I hooked it up to a light bulb. So you can see that when we finally get it attached and we let the capacitor discharge, that po potential and that voltage is going to drop as the brightness drops and it does it pretty quickly so then we're going to hook the capacitor back up to the battery and make sure that it's charged to the same potential that way the capacitor becomes our source of potential and tries to push charges through the circuit we switch up the resistor and with a different resistance we can see it takes a lot longer for that discharge to happen so based on the two different resistances we can see that there are different curves for charging and discharging capacitors. So we're going to start with the discharge. We're going to have a charge capacitor, one plate being positive, one plate being negatively charged, and we're going to have a switch open with our resistor. What we want to say is that the battery will be our source of potential since there are charges separated there. And we know that the initial voltage is just the ratio of Q over C, what we learned from the capacitor chapter. Once I close the switch, so when that switch goes from open to close, the circuit is now complete and charges are going to be allowed to flow from high to low. They're going to move through the resistor and dissipate some of their energy. We've seen that in the form of the flashing of the bulb. So if I wanted to solve for the current right off the bat, well, I know that current is voltage over resistance and the voltage is provided by the capacitor, which is Q over C divided by the resistance. So the initial current coming out of that capacitor and through that light bulb is Q over CR. However, the current is going to decrease as the voltage decreases, so the amount of charge that's passing through each second can be represented like this, as a negative dQ dt. A decrease in the amount of charge moving through that circuit per second. So since we've no Kirchhoff now, let's do the loop rule around this very simple RC circuit with a resistor and a capacitor, add up all the volts around the loop. So knowing Kirchhoff, we got to set zero equal to the voltage of the capacitor minus the voltage across the resistor. So it's going to be Q over C minus I R. And that's where we're going to start with this. Why is it a positive Q over C? Because we're going across a capacitor from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, like a battery. So we're going to gain volts as we go across the capacitor, and we're going to lose voltage when we go across the resistor. But we want to focus on how the charge changes with time. And we said that since the charge is decreasing, we know that the current can be represented by negative dQ dt as the charge changes per second. So with the dQ dt, I'm going to put that in for my current, and our equation changes just a bit. So I get plus dQ dt times r. I want to solve for the amount of charge passing through the resistor each second. Or my Q's and DQ's together and get everything else to the other side. So I'm going to do a bit of algebra here. So I'm going to move that, that Q over C to the other side, makes it negative. I want to get everything away from DQ, so I'm going to move the R and the DT. So I'm almost there. I've got DQ separated, but I need to move that Q over to the other side. So all I'm going to have to do is divide by the Q, and there we go. We've separated all our Q's and DQ's on one side, and we put everything on the other side. If I want to find how the charge changes per second, I'm going to have to integrate from having the original charge to some charge at any time t. We'll call that like q prime. And for our time, we're going to do that from zero time to any time after the switch has been closed. So we're going to have to integrate both sides of this. The easy one to do is to integrate dt. dt just becomes negative t over rc. On the other side, we have dq over q, and when we integrate dq over q, what we end up getting is the natural log of q. But we have to place it between our two bounds, so it'll be the q at any moment in time over our original q. 
Well, we want to solve for the charge at any moment in time. And to do that, we need to get rid of this natural log. We know to get rid of natural logs, we got to raise it to the E. I do the same thing over here. So what I end up getting is Q at any moment in time over the original charge equals E to the minus T over RC. And we've seen this before in drag forces. We're now seeing it here in discharging capacitors. If I want to solve for Q, one more step, and there you go. If I want to solve for the charge at any moment in time, I need to know the original charge on the capacitor, and I'm going to multiply that by E to the minus T over RC. T being the time after the switch is closed, and RC, we're going to call that our time constant. And we'll write that sometimes as tau. So tau gives us our time constant. That means that a resistance times a capacitance needs to give us a unit of seconds so that I can do time divided by time so that I just have to do e to the negative power. So I go through the derivation. I want you to show me that an ohm times a farad does give me a second in the end for my time constant. So let's play some of those games. What happens if we reach a time where t equals tau? So what happens when we reach one of those time constants? Well, in that case, t would also equal rc, and we'd be left with our original charge, e to the minus 1. And e to the minus 1, we know as a number, that comes out to 0.37. So at one time constant, we've already decreased the amount of charge on the capacitor to 37% of the original charge. So what if t equals 2 tau? If t equals 2 tau, e is not raised to the negative first, now it's now raised to the negative second, and e to the minus second gives you 0.135, or at 13% of the original charge. So we went from 100% charge to 37% charge to 13% charged just in two time constants, whatever that RC value is. And that's good for the charge on a capacitor. We can represent that as a graph. So the graph will decrease exponentially to do that e to the minus t over tau, or the RC. But what about the current? We know how the charge is changing. How does the current change with time? Well, going back to the definition of current, current is the rate of change of charge per second passing through a circuit. And since it's a decrease in the amount of charge on a capacitor, we're going to have a negative dq over dt. So it means I have to take the negative derivative of our original function here. So taking the derivative of q e to the minus t over rc, what you end up getting is q over rc times e to the minus t over rc. So you still have the exponential decay. The current's going to be some maximum value. When time equals zero, this whole function here goes away, and it goes to one, and you're left with q over rc, which if you remember way back when we started this, we said that when the switch closes, if I want to find the current, I take the voltage over the resistance, and the voltage was q over c. So this was our original current, and now looking at our equation, we have our maximum current. So I could rearrange this one more time and leave it as the maximum current e to the minus t over rc. That would be the current changing as time goes on once the switch is closed. So if we would graph the current as time goes on, we can see that the current starts off at some maximum and then decreases as time goes on. It follows the same exact curve as the charge, so the current follows the charge curve as well. At one time constant, you're at 37% of your original current, then 13% of your original current, and around four or five time constants after that has passed, you'll be left with zero current or zero charge on your capacitor, meaning your capacitor has neutralized and there's no more reason for charges to move. So go through that derivation, see if things make sense to you, and tomorrow we'll talk about the reverse of this process when we put a battery into our circuit and charge capacitors with resistors in the way.